Hey guys, welcome back to the next episode of Sweet Pool. Let's continue. Ah, uh, see how these are done. Okay, yeah, bad thing. Yuji drifted on the boundary between dreams and reality. The line between them was a miserable blur. He rose and sank again and again, unable to tell the one from the other. Each time he awoke, it felt like being pulled from a muddy bog. All he wanted was to sleep, but his brain refused to let him. <laughs> he knew what kept, what kept waking him up. In the darkness, he could hear them wriggling on the floor. Those creatures, his children, they continued to multiply. By this point, he was starting to accept it. He wasn't human. Yuji was curled up on his bed. He had lost all sense of time. All he could hear was the ceaseless wriggling. How many of them were there? Had he given birth in his sleep too? He slowly pushed himself up into a sitting position, using both of his arms for support. He was in an awful condition, both physically and mentally, but after all this time spent laying down, he figured he'd have the energy to get out of bed at least. He swung his legs to the floor, looked around the room. For some reason, he expected the lumps to be strewn all over the place. In reality, however, they were only a couple dozen on the floor near the edge of his bed. Heaving himself to his feet, he walked across the room. Everything felt distant like he was walking on clouds. Most of the lumps were fairly small. Even the largest were only about the size of his fist. They looked so soft and frail like actual human organs. Most were dark and red in color, but some could almost be considered pink. Each was covered in a glossy sheen and raised, and raised veins pulsing in rhythm. Strewn among them were thick chunks of what looked like tree bark. He brought it one of them and found that it was rubbery. This led him to conclude that these bark-like chunks were actually old flesh lumps that had withered over time. These withered ones didn't move at all. If the lumps were alive, then these were likely dead. And if they could die, then surely they must have biological functions as well. What the hell were they? His body was excreting living organisms. The only viable explanation was that he'd contracted some sort of parasite. But were these things even real? Or was he hallucinating them? Slowly he crouched down and picked one up. Up one of the small, still twitching lumps. The thin membrane covering its flesh was every bit as soft and sticky as it looked. Was it possible to physically touch a hallucination? As he watched the lump pulsing gradually slowed to a stop, had it already been dying when he picked it up? Or had he pushed it over the edge? He wasn't sure, but either way, it didn't really matter. Straightening up, Yuji carried the corpse to the kitchen and dumped it into the sink strainer. The lump still restrained its sheen, to the point that he almost expected it to start moving again. He then returned to his room. He had hoped to find lumps suddenly gone that would have proved the them figments of his imagination. But the room looked just the same as when he left it. <coughs> At the sound of the doorbell, Yuji nearly jumped out of his skin. Who could it be? His heart was thumping out of control, and the back of his neck grew hot. It felt like he'd been yanked back into reality. He could feel the anxiety in every cell. His hands were slick with sweat. Someone was standing at the gateway between the safety of home and the dangerous, dangers of the outside world. He didn't want to open it. He didn't want to see anyone. He could just ignore it, but... Nothing could possibly surprise him now. 
and yet his legs threatened to give out with each step. His body shook uncontrollably. <laughs> really? <laughs> Tetsuo was standing there, silhouetted against the dark rain clouds behind him. Yuji didn't know why he'd answered the door. Couldn't he have just ignored it? Hadn't that been the plan? His grip on the doorknob tightened. <laughs> Quickly, he tried to pull the door shut, but Setsuo wedged his shoe in to stop him. He grabbed the door and peered in at Yuji through the gap. <laughs> Yuji growled, glaring. <laughs> but Setsuo simply stared back without a word. Somehow, the silence felt accusing. He squeezed his eyes shut, his hand still on the doorknob. The words came out in an incoherent jumble. He didn't want to see Tetsuo again. His face was reminding was a reminder of what had happened. He should have hated. He should have hated every moment of it, but a tiny part of him felt good. He knew it was a normal reaction to being stimulated in that manner, but still, he resented it. It made him feel so unbearably pathetic. A moment of silence passed. Then he heard movement and opened his eyes. Tetsuo had slipped a stack of paper halfway through the gap in the door. <laughs> On closer inspection, it looked like a bundle of worksheets. Then Yuji realized that it must have been Monday. He didn't inadvertently skip school with no notice. Come to think of it, he had a vague memory of his phone ringing. Staring blankly, Yuji took the worksheets. The paper felt warm against his fingertips. With his task complete, Tetsuo silently turned and walked away. Yuji didn't bother seeing him off. Instead, he shut the door and turned back to his world. The sicky, the sticky darkness enveloping his body. The wriggling noise that echoed in his ears. Yuji stood there at the door, unmoving, his homework still in hand. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, he started laughing. <laughs> As he laughed, his chest ached, and he gripped the paper so hard it crumbled in his hand. Everything was so messed up. Him, Tetsuo, everything. So what if Kamiya had asked him to... What kind of person would agree to that request after what he'd done? He could have made up any excuse to get out of it. And yet, he hadn't. Why? Had he come to check on his victim? To see the defeat in Yuji's eyes? To point and laugh? Or, no, what difference did that make? Really, what difference did it make? <laughs> Dude has gone insane. <laughs> Leaning back against the door, Yuji slowly sank to the tile. He could feel the chills seeping through his clothes. Tetsuo was just one part of this nightmare. Everything was awful. Everything to blame. Yuji himself included. Alone in the room, alone in the hell his home had become, surrounded by writhing lumps of flesh. Yuji could only cradle his head and wonder where it would end. He's gone insane, yep. Some time after Tetsuo had left, Yuji knelt on the love seat facing the aquarium. His tetra swam through the glistening water as dainty little bubbles rose to the surface. As he gazed vacantly at the aquarium, he spied a crimson blob in the corner of his eye. At some point, while he had been distracted, it had crawled its way up to the edge of the tank. Illuminated by the light reflecting off the water, 
It looked even more like a lump of raw meat. The lump was on the verge of falling into the tank. No, you don't, little guy. Yuji needed to move it, lest it have some weird effect on the fish. Before he could, the lump jerked forward and fell into the water with a light splash. Mistaking it for food, some of the tetras approached and began to nibble. A red haze filled the water. He needed to get it out of there. And yet, for some reason, he couldn't will his body to move. After a few moments, the tetras scattered. They must have realized it wasn't food. The lump sank past the seaweed to the floor of the tank, trailing a cloud of red as it went. And that was that. Nothing happened. Despite everything, the aquarium was one thing that never changed. Its cold, sterile beauty remained untarnished. But before he could finish the thought, one of the fish began to act strangely. Out of nowhere, it started to swim in clumsy circles, as though it had lost its sense of direction. Then, after a moment, it stopped moving entirely. The next thing he knew, there was a sharp popping sound and the fish seemed to lurch in place. Oh, God! Then, with yet another pop, a flower burst from the tetra's body. A flower of viscera. Go clean your fish tank. Go clean your fish tank. Yuji gasped as his brain registered exactly what he was seeing. Oh, whoop, wrong button. In an instant, the Tetra's perfect form had become a mangled monstrosity. It felt like a glimpse of cold, hard reality. Something that had been beautiful moments ago was now a sight to turn one's stomach. The other Tetras swam past, unaffected by the remains of their fellow. This was reality, plain and simple. <gasps> Just then, he heard the sound of his front door. Another visitor? Was it Tetsuo again? The thought made him tremble, his breathing quickened. Tetsuo was the last person he wanted to see. He should just stay here, forget the door, and just watch the fish become monsters. And yet his feet moved of their own accord. Maybe it wasn't Tetsuo, or maybe no one was there. Either way, he needed to know. Only then could he have peace of mind. Yuji walked down the hall, his body stiff, the floor colder than usual under his feet. Arriving at the door, he peered out through the people. Beyond the curve of the fisheye lens, Yuji saw nothing. Were they hiding? Yuji waited with bated breath, but couldn't hear any movement. Slowly, he slid his stiff fingers around the doorknob and opened the door. The sky was dark with storm clouds, and the rain still hammered the ground. Yuji looked both ways down the hall, but there was no one in sight. Feeling slightly relieved, he opened the door a little further. After being cooped up in the apartment for so long, the outside air felt refreshing. He inhaled deeply. Just then, he noticed something on the ground at his feet. A plastic food container had spilled out of the to-go bag. He squatted down and looked at it. The contents appeared to be some kind of stew that he poked. The lid was open, and most of it had spilled out onto the ground. The sound he heard earlier was the container hitting the ground. Did someone purposely leave it here? He couldn't think of anyone who would bring him food. Erica had just given birth. There's no way she was able to walk around just yet. Did someone drop it off at the wrong apartment? The mystery of it all was still a little unsettling, but he couldn't just leave it lying there. After one last look around, Yuji scooped up the bag and container and went back inside. Then he returned with some paper towels and cleaned up the mess. Tossing the dirty, ba uh, dirty paper towels in the trash, he rinsed out the food container in the, in the sink. Almost said the tank. No, you've already damaged those fish enough. Set it to dry and went back to his room. After this point, most of the flesh lumps 
had stopped moving and the horrible wriggling sound was gone. He was birthing them with less frequency today. His condition was slowly stabilizing, both physically and mentally. Maybe it was finally over, in which case he needed to go back to school. But first, he decided to see the doctor one more time. The past few days had been downright bizarre. After what he'd been through, there had to be something wrong with his body. This time, however, he would bring one of the flesh lumps with him. One look at the fatigue excuse would fly out the window. This time, he didn't care if it was a disease. He just wanted to know the cause. Not knowing was the far, was far, far worse. Drowning men will clutch at straws, he thought, then flop down on his bed and close his eyes. The next morning, Yuji awoke at the first rays of light filtered in through the window. It was still early, but nevertheless, he decided to get ready for school. He realized belatedly that he had no idea what the current date was. He switched the TV on for the first time in ages. The rest of his morning was spent giving his room and aquarium a much-needed deep cleaning. The flesh lump had made the tank cloudy, so he took it out and changed the water. A few Tetris had died overnight, so he removed their corpses as well. Save for the faint lingering sense of fever and, lethar and lethargy, he felt much better today. He stopped giving birth too. The past few days had truly been a walking nightmare to the point that he had wished himself dead. But now he felt nothing. The dead flesh dirtied his hands, but he continued cleaning regardless, scooping up each little corpse one by one. Then once he finished, he left the apartment. Outside, the sky was a pale gray, though the storm had since let up. It felt like an eternity had passed since the last time he'd walked through the outside world. The half-dried asphalt smelled of rain. Today, his plan was to visit the neighborhood clinic and get a checkup before school. In his pocket was a plastic bag with a withered lump inside. What would the doctor say when she saw it? He, mildly, he was mildly terrified to find out. At the clinic, the waiting room was packed as usual. Once again, he waited about 30 minutes until the nurse called his name, then stepped into the exam room. He informed the doctor that his symptoms had worsened and, the prompt, and then promptly handed the plastic bag. The doctor took one look inside and gave Yuji a funny look before handing the bag back dismissively. Confused, Yuji opened the bag. Hmm? The lump had vanished without a trace. The doctor seemed to intuit, some, to intu, intuit something from this. She asked him to undergo a simple test, saying that it would produce fast results, though not comprehensive results. Flabbergasted, Yuji reluctantly agreed. You, the results showed nothing out of the ordinary. Satisfied, the doctor said, looking at him with a knowing expression on her face. In the end, she decided that the root cause was anxiety and that his hallucinations were symptoms of high stress levels. She prescribed him a mood stabilizer and sleeping pills and instructed him to get as much rest as possible. With that, the appointment was over. Yuji paid at the front desk and left the clinic. As he walked to the station, his brain attempted to process what had just happened. He was sure he'd put the lump in the bag this morning, and yet the bag was empty. Had he merely convinced himself that he'd put it in the bag before he left? Or had he grabbed the wrong bag? No, he definitely remembered putting it in the bag. But now it was just gone. Vanished. He'd gone to the doctor looking for answers and left even more confused. His legs felt like lead. School was the last place he wanted to be. There was no way he was be able to concentrate like this. Wrong button. But now that the doctor had given him a clean bill of health for the second time, it reaffirmed an alternate possibility lurking in the back of his mind. He needed to talk to Tetsuo or Zenya. After everything they'd put him through, he really didn't fancy the prospect of being around either one, but he had no other choice. Worst case scenario, if he failed to uncover anything significant, at least he'd known that it was time to give up. This was his only lead. He needed to find out what they knew. With a renewed determination, he 
In his stride, he pressed onward to school. So since we're only doing one of these a week, I thought we'd do them longer. If you guys would be okay with that, let me know in the comments over at BitChute, over on YouTube, um, on, you know, Patreon, all that jazzy wazzy. Thank you. As soon as he opened the classroom door, a familiar buzz washed over him. First period had just ended. Yuji had only gone a few days, and yet it felt like he'd returned from a distant planet. Some of his classmates noticed him at the door, but quickly went back to minding their own business. Yuji went to his desk, hung his book bag on the hook, and sat back down. The room seemed unusually loud today. He wondered if he just needed to, acc to acc 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 acclimate. Why couldn't I say that word? Weird. To it again. However, it quickly became apparent that something was out of the ordinary. Nearby, a group of students were chatting in a circle, their voices loud with excitement. シロヌマ、あいつ本当やべえよ。俺見てないんだけどさ、何やらかしたの。三年の沖永がいるじゃん。朝さ、下駄箱のとこでシロヌマがあいつ殴ったらしいよ。そんで沖永もやり返そうと
Instead, his first instinct was to scoff at them for acting like they knew anything. Just then, the bell rang, cutting through the tension to signal the start of the second period. Their next class was chemistry. Camilla entered the room, book in hand, books in hand, and the other students wandered back to their seats. Silently, Makoto turned away and went back to his desk. Oh, poor Makoto. Sakiyama. Upon noticing Yuji's presence, Kamiya smiled. As it turned out, it wasn't easy to call in sick when you weren't even sure whether it was a day or a night. His phone showed a lot of missed calls from the school. Technically, he'd skipped without permission. Kamiya replied with a grin and nod, then returned to his, his lectern? Oh, lectern's at the table, isn't it? Meanwhile, Yuji could see some of his classmates stealing glances his way. As he rose to his feet for morning prayer, he felt his mood sour. He couldn't stop thinking about Tetsuo punching Xenia. Supposedly, they'd both been sent home for the day. Why would Tetsuo do that? Yuji spent the rest of the class wondering what could have happened. Well, Xenia's really annoying. That, 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 that's just the given there. At the start of lunch break, Yuji promptly left the classroom and headed for the chemistry lab. Kamiya had wanted to talk to him about something but he couldn't imagine what it might be. He, uh, his unexcused absences, perhaps. When he arrived at the chemistry lab, the door was unlocked and the lights were already on. Camille was sitting perched on a lab table. He smiled and raised his hand in a greeting as Yuji opened the door. In his other hand was a package of rice crackers. He must have noticed Yuji staring at it, and he gave the crackers a little shake as he explained. Yeah. Kamiya indicated the lab table opposite of his. Yuji did as instructed. Kamiya nodded and nibbled on a cracker. まあ、大丈夫ならいいんだけど。休んだら間連絡なかったでしょ。まあ、体調不良だろうとは思ったから俺の方で処理しといたよ。すみません。ごめん。迷惑をおかけして。ティーチャーカットアバックハード。いやい
どうも何を考えてるのかわからないところがある担任がこんなこと言っちゃいけないんだろうけどね本当は今朝の喧嘩のことも理由がよくわからなくてね聞いても何も答えてくれないんだただ崎山とは結構話をするんだろう yeah, that's what we'll call it. そんなことは For some reason, Yuji couldn't deny it. If the question was whether or not he liked Tetsuo, then the answer was empathetically no. And yet, he couldn't bring himself to say the words. で、本題だ。帰りに、今日の宿題のプリントを白の間に届けてやってくれないかな。崎山が休んでた時のお礼のつもりでってわけじゃないけど。Setting the balled up plastic on the table next to him, Kamiya picked up a stapled stack of papers and held it out to Yuji.、Mm-hmm. Yuji hesitated, accepting this task would mean having to see Tetsuo again. <sighs> yeah. After a moment, he decided to take the worksheets. It was hard to decline knowing that Tetsuo had been willing to do it for him. Plus, this might be his best opportunity to finally get some answers. So, ka. Yo katta. So, じゃあ頼んだよ。これ、白沼の住所と地図ね。Kamiya handed Yuji a piece of paper, then picked up the wad of plastic beside him. これも持ってく Do I look like your damn garbage? <laughs> yeah. So, ka. <laughs> Lazy ass teacher. With the printed directions in hand, Yuji turned and headed for the door. So, じゃあ失礼しますよろしく頼むよ Kamiya waved and Yuji nodded curtly before walking out of the chemistry lab. As he walked up the stairs, he let out a breath. He was going to Tetsuo's house after school today. The thought made him unbearably nervous. He had been trying not to think about it. But the memory of Friday's incident was still fresh in his mind. One look at Tetsuo and he might freeze up altogether. Still, he had to take the chance. He was desperate for any information he could get. Reassuring his anxiety, anxious brain, he headed back to class. Oi, what's the matter, Makoto? I'm a little bit scared. Are you scared of a girl? Didn't mean to hit that. That's where we're gonna leave it. So, thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Sweet Pool. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the mystery as much as I am. And poor little fishies. Can I get an F in the comments? And poor little fishies for the fish fish? In fact, let's give the fish some names. You guys name the little tetras. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. I'm doing it.